with you, Karen. It's great to see you again and to speak with you. And I'm very excited to hear about the, a story you have to share with me, share with us. Thanks. So um, the story that I'm going to tell you about now, um, I hadn't put it in any of my episodes. It's interesting from the perspective of the era that it represents and, and basically what I was doing. So the story is about um, communicating with two different universities and basically being the liaison between them for something that one of them had found that might have been interesting to the other university. So the dream is, uh, well, it kind of starts with me in Tantal with the people from the universe, the medical university. So the start of the dream is I'm with them and we are traveling to Chem University, which is now Egypt, um, to talk about some uh, energy device that the Chem University had, had discovered. Each month of, of the year, a different university would make announcements of its great findings and if it had any gifts to give the population like a new new device that's when it would be handed out and it was really exciting people couldn't wait to find out what the next bit of technology was going to be it's a bit like when a new iphone comes out i don't know how you feel but i just can't wait to get my hands on it uh, so from the University of Api, which is the um, medical university, we, we went to one of the towers and there were three of us, me and two of the people from the medical university. And the towers in Tantau were where you went to, to catch one of the um, flying uh, machines to go longer distance because there was the smaller ones for personal use and then there was the larger ones for going longer distances. So the towers are very tall and you ascend them um, with your, your, your the device, your own personal device for buoyancy, for going. Um, I, I, I'm always reluctant to say anti-gravity because it doesn't feel like it is anti-gravity. Um, in the dream, it's always a, a certain technology which makes you lighter. Um, but I can't, I can't say, was it anti-gravity, wasn't it? Right. Um, it doesn't feel right to say that. So um, you, you go up the, the, what was it, essentially to us is a, uh, a lift shaft, but it's, it's just like a, a hallway for us. So, so um, does that mean that it doesn't even have stairs because you, you don't need stairs? It does have stairs, but that's right at the top when you're between the the, the small the, the levels, when you're just walking around finding a seat. So it, I did see some stairs, but to actually get to the top of the, the, the tower, there's, there's no stairs. You just, it's just like an open lift shaft. So you go up and you step out and you change your buoyancy to, to relatively natural. And then there's a, there was a platform and then there was some stairs and then there was another platform and a few more stairs. And there were really comfy seating areas. And I remember sitting down in one of these areas and the two people were with me and we were chatting casually, as you would if you were in you know one of these airport lounges. Um, nobody brought me any drinks or anything. Um, and then when it was ready to, for us to go, um, we, were, we were called up and we went up one level. It was only like three or four steps. Um, and then there was this sort of platform area and it was just straight into this um, flying machine. Is there anything unique about that experience or specific? Well, it's quiet, very quiet. Not like an aeroplane and not, nothing rapid 
well, it didn't feel rapid. It, it didn't feel like a sudden acceleration. It just, it was very gentle. It was traveling at speed, but it wasn't, didn't have that feeling of outside of it. But when you're inside of it, all the sides you could see through and down on the floor you could see through. Um, I don't remember looking up to see if I could see up upwards. No, I, I, I can't remember. To be inside of a totally contained structure that's transparent from the inside. Is mm. that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. And that just felt so very normal. Oh. And then when we reached Kem, there was another tower. Um, it looked a bit different to the one we got into, but it was still a nice tall tower. So I, uh, I tried to draw draw that for you where it was. So it was um, up from the Sphinx. If you're looking from the Sphinx upwards, it was up and to the right, raised up. So you had to. When we came down the tower, it was a pathway that wound around, and it went to um, a longer pathway that went up to one of the main buildings at the top of the hill and that pathway was black and white so whenever there was a step the color changed from black to white looking up from the, the sphinx up towards the main building at the top there was there was no pyramid there by the way no pyramid um, to the left there was um, the village the area where people lived and there were lots of other buildings scattered around in this dream, it was a male lion. Body had been cut out, so uh, it wasn't like the really early times when it was just a, a carved head sticking up out of the hillside. Well, not a hillside, it's a gentle hill. Um, the the head actually did have a body and and arms, and, and um, so it was in its own cut out enclosure. We we entered in in one place, and then we had to descend to the lower level where we met up with two of the people from Chem University and they were telling us they were very excited. I don't really want to call it a machine. It, it, let's call it a device for lack of a better word that they had been working on. So Chem University was the University for Applied Energy. So Perry was where they, they found all the different ways of, of getting energy or using energy or um, the actual mechanisms for energy. But, but Chem was how, what, how do we do what we can, what, what can we get out of what the University of Perry has discovered. But then Chem would come up with things that were relevant to other universities like the medical university. And in this particular situation, they were looking at vibrational technology. And what they discovered was that a person has a certain vibrational frequency. And if they can identify that particular frequency, uh, then they can find where on that person, if anywhere, there is something that doesn't res resound with that same frequency. And that means there's something wrong, something not right, something that they need to look into. And so, well, this is what the, the people at Chem University were thinking. Now, remember, every single person um, from Tantal at that time frame had to go through each of the universities. So it wasn't as if the medical university was foreign to the, to the scientists of Chem. 20 years before they go to the university, then 10 years at each of the universities. Right. So they spend 10 years at each of the universities. And so they're really familiar with um, what the work is in Perry or what the work is in uh, Api or so the scientists from from Chem were, you know, quite attuned to right. what right. goes in these other places. 
there I didn't see any sand. I don't I don't remember seeing any sand even outside the main enclosure area. I don't remember seeing sand. Um, the area isn't green within the enclosure of the university. It's all black, white and red stone. The floor, there's, there's, there's flooring, big blocks of stone for the flooring everywhere and they're either black or white and the buildings are either black, white or red or a combination thereof. And I don't see any plants within that area. But outside of that area is lush. It's okay. it's greenery plus. So it's like that one area is completely free of plants, which is quite common with the universities. There weren't many of them that had a lot of plants. But outside of that area, there were there were big trees. There was lots of things going on, and then of course there was there was water nearby. But uh, it would go up and down depending on the season. So it had a very university feel about it. You know, people with a purpose. In in the people, can you talk more about uh, what what they look like and what they're wearing? So if you could imagine something loose, um, I don't remember there being any seams on the fabric. It just seemed to drape, but without being pieces of material stitched together. It just seemed to, you just put it on and it just slid mm. on. And it was very loose, um, but comfortable almost silky in its in its feel mm -hmm. and, and color wise very vibrant yeah. um, people had their color choices and um, it was kind of part of personality having a lot of color lots of different colors of flowers if you can imagine any kinds of flowers that's the sorts of colors Some colleges and universities, they sort of, their campus is entirely self-contained and other colleges and universities um, are sort of in cities and, and they intermingle with, you know, local um, shops and res residents. Was this more of the former, more of an enclosed university that everyone there was there for the school? Yes, yeah. that's exactly right. Okay. Um, most of the universities outside of Tantau were like that. They were totally enclosed in their own world. Mm -hmm. In Tantel, that was a different situation because there was the two universities there and there was the whole of Tantel. So it didn't have its own village or anything. Those, those universities were um, just part of Tantel. Is, new, is it a new technology or this, this device? A healing, it's a new, healing device. new technology. It's something that they they think that it could have some medical application to it, but they don't really, you know, they, they don't quite know um, how useful it's going to be, but they just want to talk about it. Okay. Um, so is this something that happens in a sort of like an amphitheater or in an office? I could describe it, but it, it's, it's not like a laboratory, but it, there's, there's big pillars, big square pillars, and then there's a, a row of different kinds of machines against one wall. There's one that's really interesting, I don't know what it's for, but it looked like it was made of copper, two glass bubble things in it with other, with other metal things inside. No idea what it was for, but it stood out because it was really interesting looking. And there was a whole heap of different sorts of machines. They were explaining to us how this device, you had to determine the frequency of the person in order for the device to be useful. And so the person had to actually, once they'd worked out a person's frequency, then the person had to go through this, it was like a, a stone ring 
Is that um, something in your dream that you, that you that you did too? You all took turns going through and. No, just one person did it. Um, it, it was the one person that they'd done the frequency on. So basically then they were say, showing the person they had gone through and nothing actually happened. It was just like one person going through a, um, a big hoop. And of, of course, with the technology, you could just float through it. You know, you just... Uh, wait, wait, and then so just to be clear the person is nude so they're floating through not using their own technology it's the technology of the ring that is floating them through so, that no they have their technology but the the technology for the um flotation is on the wrists oh, okay and so when they go through that part, you're expecting a reaction from the ring. And so then they attached something to the body. And I can't remember what it was. I think it was just a piece of fabric, actually. It was something tied onto one leg. And then the body did the same thing, went through. And when it reached the place where the thing was tied on, um, the ring turned all kinds of different colors. The actual ring looks like it's just a regular smoky kind of crystal um, quartz. That's all it looks like. A solid piece of round quartz. And when the person, when it reaches that point where this, like what we would call a foreign body, um, there were colors different. The, the, the actual quartz had some colors in it. So the person you're with goes through, uh, and then I assume gets clothed again, and, and that, that essentially concludes the visit. Okay. Now, this technology was just to see if there was something wrong with them. Okay. Something that was not vibrating at the same, in the same way that they were vibrating. Okay. Does that make any sense? Um, it, so it sounds to me like it's a, it's a sort of a scanning device that's instead of in our uh, medical world, it would be something that sort of determined there's something wrong with um, a person's um, organs um, or an injury or bones this is this is doing a scan of a person's frequencies and and indicating through color where uh, the frequencies are in any way off and that's what this does right the people from Canada are the medical university were quite excited and they basically wanted to take it with them and play with it like it was a new toy uh, and the people from chem university were fine with that and that's pretty much the whole dream oh wow so 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 this was like hey we made this device that can detect uh, frequency issues, come check it out. You go check it out, test it out, and they say, this is great, yeah. we, we, we want it. And they say, okay, and yeah. you float it, I, presumably you, you float it, you float it back out yeah. of the vessel. Yeah. It was really an exciting time. Thank you.